Hey guys, it's L Super Sonic Q here with the beginning of my fall schedule. So I decided to skip all the formalities and kind of jump cut the end of summer. I know I usually do maybe like a little wrap up video, so I might post that a little bit later. But I thought this video now, in preparation for my fall stuff as well as again kind of ending the summer stuff, would be in order. And this definitely will help us with what's to come this fall with all of the clay tutorials, which I'm booting up for, buying new clay, and uh, really putting a lot of effort into that kind of realm. So I thought that before we actually get into the clay tutorials of September, and while we're in this kind of off um, week or so, maybe two weeks before I actually start uh, airing the episodes, um, this was brought up by Sonic Mon E, and I kind of wanted to make a video about it because I thought it would be worth making a video about, not so much in kind of helping with, with the tutorials, but kind of on this video itself being a kind of tutorial or kind of a visual on how to, I guess, make kind of generic body parts when sculpting, how to connect them, and how to make your clay model pretty much look like, you know, um, correct proportions and like a human should if you're sculpting a human or, you know, that type of thing. So with that, I wanted to start, and that's why I am actually have uh, this kind of black poster board set up, which is different than normal. No, I didn't switch the color or anything on purpose, but because I'm going to be using this white clay, and you're going to be able to see it a whole lot better on this black poster board. So with that said, let's begin. I might do this in a couple parts debatably on how long each one is and how exactly in depth I'm going to get, but to start, um, I'll kind of start with a head, I guess. So you got your clay and it's kind of all, you know, messed up or whatever, so again, we're going to turn it into a circle. So again, this is kind of just a general kind of outline on how it should look. So again, with all hair and kind of facial features and stuff aside, um, that's how you would make kind of, I guess, a head. And I want to make the neck to show where I would connect it, how I would connect it, and then we're going to kind of connect it to a body to exactly show how that should look. So there's our head, and here is our neck, and that is going to leave some marks on the poster board, so good thing I have this handy piece of paper right there I can put the clay on. Alright, so, well, I guess I'll kind of put that to the side now. So, Here's our head and here's our neck. What I'm going to do is, and I, I typically do this for most of my human looking models, is I would kind of form the head how I want it to form, and rather than putting the neck right on the underside of the head, I'm going to kind of move it over to uh, the side, I guess the side slash back of the head, and then use that technique to kind of push the, you know, with my finger, push the clay of the neck into the clay of the back of the head like this and you gotta you know kind of really get it in there so that there are no seams and no kind of anything about you know that you can see and I feel like this gives you a better sense of the head because rather than putting the neck right you know um, right underneath the head if you look at yourself kind of profile in the mirror which I'm actually doing kind of right now as I'm talking about this um, your chin obviously sticks out and stuff, and you have a much easier time, you know, trying to form the rest of the head, um, with the chin, and then kind of go for the face from there, if you leave yourself that space at the bottom. And what you can just do is take your finger, and, um, get this, kind of, where the chin would be, and push it onto the neck, like that. Kind of to make a little arc, I guess. And then, again, you kind of just have to use your sculpting capabilities. Um, you can kind of push part of the neck up a lot more. You know, just make sure that it's all kind of on. Toothpicks would help in this sense. You could put a toothpick through the neck. And at that point, like that, you pretty much have your head with the neck. I'm going to push it down a little bit because I don't actually make my necks too big once I, you know, start a model, to, no matter who I'm sculpting, really. I kind of keep the necks on the shorter side. So... That's essentially a head and a neck, and now I'm going to connect this head and neck to a body. So I'm going to kind of lay that down to the side over there first. So here's our head and neck, and now I'm going to kind of make the body. I think it would be pretty wise to end up using a toothpick right here, and we'll kind of put that uh, through the neck and through, I guess, the head kind of inside the head. So. Maybe about half of the toothpick should be pretty good because we're going to have to connect that to the body, like I said. So, when I do the body, um, I typically would, obviously, more or less, sculpt kind of the, I guess, chest and stomach first, that whole kind of, you know, the long section, and then obviously 
um, do the limbs after. So we're not really going to pay any attention to the limbs or the shoulder blades or, uh, you know, anything like that right now. So first off is making, I guess, a pretty large shape. And actually, you know, this might be easier than I kind of anticipated because we're just going to make a shape and then put that in right there. So now we're going to use kind of what we were doing with our fingers before and kind of mushing the clay into each other. So at this point, we're just kind of connecting the neck to the body that we kind of just put in place. So you'll do that until it's kind of all, you know, seamless. And now here might be a little more difficult of um, a concept to grasp. So what I'm going to do is kind of put my finger here and make enough room, probably just, you know, about my finger width wide on both sides, which will be the little spots we're going to put the arms in. Um, this part is preferably going to be the shoulder. But with that said, um, we need to kind of make the neck a little more prominent, you know, uh, like that. But that's essentially what you're going to do for there, and then what you can do is kind of pull the body a little bit longer, and obviously this probably isn't going to be for the whole length of the body. You're probably going to need to add some more clay, um, especially around the um, sort of the thighs and below that. You're probably going to need to add more. But to start, this is pretty much how the body will be. Um, I want to make a, a note of the body, though, because this actually is kind of where I think some people might mess this up, and actually, uh, you have to keep this in mind when you're sculpting, is notice that in kind of elongating the body, there's a chance that because you're kind of pulling more clay, you know, that this is going to get a lot more flat, and you don't really want that. You kind of want your figure to, you know, have the same kind of size all around, and make him look three-dimensional, not so much two-dimensional, and by pulling on the clay, we're going to make it flatter and flatter. So, you want to make sure that you kind of have enough clay to work with up around the chest and the shoulder areas, and then you can always add more clay on the back, which I think I'll show um, after I kind of get this part done and we do the um, the actual arms and stuff. So, um, just kind of going to mess around a little bit with these top parts, kind of push them in, pull them out, until I kind of have these little stubs right here. And I actually might want to push the head down a little bit more, make the neck a little bit thinner. Uh, but essentially, that is going to be our body for right now. And um, con continuing on, we'll sculpt the limbs, or at least the arms next. Alright, so we got this much now. And I'm running out of clay, so I'll have to stop the camera and get some more at some point. But for right now, we're going to do the arms. So arms are pretty basic. Pretty much roll out a long piece of clay. And again, depending on specifically what type of character you're making, you know, that would depend on exactly, you know, arm position, arm, you know, all that kind of length and stuff. But for right now, just as a generic kind of um, model guy we're making, you know, um, this is how to do it. So we have the little bit of the shoulder that we left in the last kind of part. And now I'm going to take this arm and push the shoulder up. I'm going to have my finger and push it up. So it's a little bit, you know, I guess raised over where like this one would be. So that's a little bit farther up. And then I'm going to take one end of the clay, probably the thicker end, because, you know, arms go from um, thick to thinner. And I'm going to put that right kind of where I push this up with my finger. So right in there. And that might look a little bit weird right now, but now with that little, there's a seam there that kind of goes all the way around. We're going to take our finger again and kind of block that seam so that you can't see it all the way around. And then uh, there might still be a little piece kind of right here that looks a little bit weird, so we'll just take the rest of the shoulder piece and kind of roll it in to, I guess, the where the neck connects to the body where the shoulder piece is. And then from that point, we're just kind of going to bring the arm down and do some sculpting to kind of make the upper part of the arm look right and then we have a shoulder piece and an arm and stuff and eventually again after kind of sculpting and stuff we're going to have what is our arm and shoulder so um yeah that's pretty much that i can show it again on the other side and again it might be a little thin but we'll go back and add some clay into the back and stuff so we'll do that again 
get some clay, roll it flat. Trying to keep this in proportion as best I can right now. So we're going to take our finger and kind of push the shoulder up like that. Take the thicker end of the arm, put it right in there. And then get rid of the, th the seam all the way around. We're kind of going to fold it up into where the neck meets the start of the body. And then just use our sculpting capabilities to kind of um, make it go all the way around and essentially create ourselves a shoulder. And then again, going from there, you can kind of, you know, this is pretty good because you can kind of pose it however you want and uh, stuff like that. So, that is the arms and the, well, yeah, the arms and the body and the shoulders and how to connect them all and stuff. And now we'll move on to the, I guess, thighs and everything below. So, yeah. And now we're going to continue on with the thighs and pretty much everything below there. So, this part I always find a little bit more challenging than making the shoulders or anything like that. And I think I find it challenging because I can never really get the height right. I always kind of sculpt, or I always used to sculpt kind of the thigh and, I guess, groin area first, and then try and con connect the legs onto that, but it always gave such a, a large portion of kind of thigh area, and it just really didn't look right. So this is a pretty easy and pretty great technique to use to um, make your character proportionate, and it goes like this. Alright, so it's the same thing as we did with the arms, pretty much. I'm just trying to get some clay together here, enough clay, and... We're going to sculpt it, you know, um, like we did with the arms, except maybe a little bit thicker because legs are usually thicker than arms. So, again, kind of just making it, you know, a long, a long piece of clay. Now, we're going to, I guess I'll kind of have to ruin this poster board. Now we're going to have to do the same thing again. Trying to do this kind of kind of fast the same way or so they're somewhat the same height let me switch the camera a little bit alright so we got these two pieces here so like I said earlier I had a lot of trouble I should do this on paper I don't want to ruin my poster board um, I had a lot of trouble with sculpting again the the thigh area so this is kind of the clever solution I ended up with you kind of put both of them together and you connect them at the top. Kind of just, you know, mushing them together, I guess. And then, as you put them together at the top, you end up making the kind of thigh slash groin area. And then you're left with two legs. And obviously, I'm not going to put them on straight like this. But when you put them on, it'll be a really nice kind of appearance. And a very, you know, human-looking appearance uh, to your clay model, rather than trying to you know, make a separate area and then put two legs on, which I, again, always had a problem with. So there is only kind of one pitfall to keep watch on when you're doing this, and it's being too thin, obviously. Um, that's way too thin because there's so much more on kind of, I guess, where the stomach would end. So uh, I guess I don't really need to do this for the whole model, and it's good because I'm actually running out of clay. Again, having to restock really soon. But um, this would kind of... Uh, make use of the entirety of making sure your model stays 3D. And that's always adding clay to the back. You can always add clay to the back if you need to. So let's get this stuff out of the way. And there's him. Alright. So simply all you have to do is make a small piece like that and line it up with the area that's looking a little bit flat. And again, kind of using your sculpting capabilities with your fingers and stuff, just kind of work it into into each other and you know it instantly makes it thicker and I can do the same thing for the leg which I will do because I'm gonna kind of finish this guy and all throughout this this was kind of a I guess I guess I should kind of call it a, a raw sculpting but um toothpicks are highly recommended I don't actually think I kind of talk about them enough in my clay tutorials 
but toothpicks are definitely going to save you a whole lot of time because I know that like I'm sure some kind of um, some amateur sculptors and some you know professional sculptors too and stuff you know people use armatures or kind of wire frames to build around their uh, clay model when they sculpt but for me honestly um, because I started doing clay such a long time ago, I never was exposed to that, and I know now it exists and stuff. However, I still don't use that when I do clay, and I know that making, like, say, larger models, it would just help in terms of the, you know, the bulk of the clay, because it would hold it together better. But especially, you know, I, my models typically aren't over, like, I'd say maybe five to seven inches is a, uh, maybe, maybe more like five to nine inches it's somewhere somewhere around there is, is a typical size model for me nowadays so i really don't see the need to make an armature for you know a model of that size and again a long time ago i had toothpicks at my disposal so using toothpicks in the limbs and as connecting pieces are really going to help your models uh, not, not only stand up but in the assembly process and that's not to say that um you might have trouble trying to kind of I guess I'll demonstrate a little bit um, after I kind of get the rest of this clay onto the back of this leg. It's not to say you're not going to have trouble with trying to make them, I guess, stand up or something if you're trying to, you know, um, make the model, you know, a, a certain way, but it's going to help a lot in terms of the assembly alone because what you can do and what I do sometimes is this. I'll kind of put toothpicks inside uh, kind of going through inside the model and let's just kind of push this together and then I'll kind of make the spot on the model where I want it to go and then pull it out well that kind of stuck but I'll pull it out they'll stay in the whole the holes will be made and then you can use some glue which I'll kind of advocate for this Loctite super glue, that's what I use. And then when it comes out, you can kind of glue it in place, and you know that it'll be hard and, you know, it won't fall over in the oven or anything because the soft clay baking, you know. So after it's all hard and stuff and comes out of the oven, you can glue it on as you put it in the oven, and, you know, you'll have a finished model standing up with no kind of uh, worries that it might fall over in the oven, which, if you guys have been following me, and for anybody who hasn't been following me, one of the biggest pitfalls I have with my clay is that it falls over in the, in the oven, and that's because, you know, I don't assemble it right, and it gets too top-heavy, or, you know, it just ends up falling over. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I just kind of felt the need to kind of fix these, I guess, pants or legs, whatever we're calling them, a little bit more. And then I'll kind of back up. Oh, I guess I'm back all the way. And again, toothpicks would help a lot here, but kind of pose this guy. Or well, we don't really need to pose him. But we do like that. And I really wish that uh, kind of had more room here, but essentially that, in conclusion, is how you would most successfully sculpt uh, a generic kind of human-looking figure. And when I say human, um, you know, like I said, I, that's, I don't necessarily mean human like a real person, but uh, if you're sculpting the, the human-like kind of characters such as Link or Pit or stuff like that, um, kind of detailing aside, like I said before, uh, of course the face and stuff would be a completely different matter, but that's what my clay tutorials are for if you need help, but that's, that's pretty much how you would make the, or how I make anyway, um, kind of the generic parts and how... A human figure should look and again um, with the time limit and stuff I kind of give myself um, you can kind of use your sculpting abilities sculpting you know preferences to um, make either the shape a little bit slimmer you know um, adjust the the poses of the posture um, kind of stuff like that but that's the basic shape the basic stuff how I do it and uh, with all detailing, this would look like a character from whatever you want it to be a character from. It also reminds me of Taboo right now, if, if he was all blue. But that's how to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. This kind of precursor to my clay tutorials for September. 
I'm also for Sonic Q, and I hope you guys stick around for those tutorials when they air all throughout the month. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, Finn.